Manchester City can spend X amount on Nathan Ake. He's 180 centimetres. Not a peep about his height. As soon as Manchester United, we sign Lissandro Martinez. Whoa, we've signed the shortest centre-back in the Premier League. My God, if only he was as tall as Dan Byrne. He might be able to win more. At... Oh, 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 he's... oh, all right. Okay, so Lissandro Martinez actually won more of his aerial duels last season than Dan Byrne. <laughs> How are we doing, everybody? In this video, I need to dispel a few bad, bad myths that are existing straight away about Lissandro Martinez because it's easy just to say, oh, he's five foot nine. He's not going to be good for Manchester United. He's tiny. I want him to be much taller. If only he was taller, he'd be the perfect defender. In this video, I'm going to run through some tactical analysis on Haaland, on Nunez, and Martinez's performances against both in the Champions League for Ajax last season. And how we can see how his football IQ is probably far more of an important conversation than his height. So please, if you do enjoy the video, make sure you go down there by the end of it and hit that subscribe button. Become part of the United People's TV community. I'd love to have you on board. But look, I think this is going to be a really interesting one. Big up to George as well for helping with all the research on this. But I'm not just going to base this off just what I want to say. I'm going to base this off facts and base this off what we can see and what we have seen from those games. So what I'm going to do now is run through them all with you here. Uh, so let's go for it. So you can see here, Lissandro Martinez position down there in terms of the ball coming through. Nice. I'll jump in. I'll get rid of that. Easy. That's not really got anything to do with Haaland, but that's just in, in terms of his, he's known as a butcher. He's known as a, as a very aggressive defender. In terms of positional awareness, Martinez is a 10 out of 10. That's what I would say. And it makes up for what might be perceived as a weakness in his height. Take this, for example. This is Martinez going back with his back towards his own goal, running with Haaland coming at him. His timing spot on. In there, take the ball off him. Lovely, lovely. Next one here. Again, these aren't just all examples. Oh, Sam, just show me examples of him winning all the aerial duels. X, Y, Z. We didn't sign him. To win all the aerial duels and uh, lo and behold he probably might lose a few just like anybody man last season we had at last i told you i compared united to space jam villains and we still conceived from set pieces the height isn't everything but look it I, in this in this video i want you to really take a focus on his football iq in this position here harlan's pressing down on him he could go back there i think that's towards timber back towards his own goal go left nah i'll just knock it past you he's got the the awareness there press resistant doesn't matter doesn't matter if harlan's Bearing down on him. Nah, that's right. I'll just skip past you. Easy enough. This one here. Haaland receiving the ball into himself. Martinez makes the right call. Pressures him. Wins the ball back. Goes behind. And there's lots and lots of examples here. Look, that's Haaland there. Circled. Martinez about to run him for the ball. Cuts that lane out. Takes a touch. Gets away from him. This one here in particular. Dortmund players, three of them bearing down on Ajax. Martinez receives the ball in a situation like this. It seems very simple of what to do. Just pass it back to the keeper. It's easy. Nah, it's all right. I'll turn and face this way. But Haaland's there. Nah, it's all right. I'll just pass it over there. Positional awareness. Quality. Ability. Didn't just crap himself and knock it back to the keeper. He thought, no, you know what? I can, do, I can make a better situation out of this. This one here, for example. Well, that, that, that's him winning a header with Haaland in a box. What's not to love about that? And also, again, this is a crucial aspect of why he's been signed. How good he is with his distribution there. Haaland's in front of him. He finds that ball all the way over there to Anthony, I believe, on the right wing. A wonderful sweeping pass. We go down here. That's him. He could back off and cover Haaland, but that's where Blind is. He goes in aggressively, wins the ball. This position here. Look how many, def look how many uh, Dortmund players are bearing down on him. Oh, I'll just sweep it out there to Masraoui. He played fantastic in that game. Right? Dortmund, they lost. 4-0. Unlucky. Let me pull up. I think I've got the uh, stats from that game. I think I've got the stats from that game. One second here. It's all kicking off. No, I don't. Have we got them down here? I think they're down there. There we go. My God, I've got so many windows open here. It's all going crazy. Uh, let me pull that there. I'm not going to do this again. This has made it a far less fluid video. But look, these are stats. 95% pass completion. 8 out of 10 long passes completed. But, look, you, but you don't need the stats. I'm, as I said, I'm not here to just describe to you how good his stats are. I'm here to make you look and think differently 
about how he's been playing in these games and how his height won't be a particular issue for the Sandro Martinez because of how good his football IQ is. Now let's move over here and let's see how he played against Benfica and of course Darwin Nunes. And that's why I'm looking at these two games. Erling Haaland, City's big new striker. Not literally just big, but they're massive, they're big money signing. He's going to score X amount of goals. We're going to play against Haaland. How is he going to, how is he going to play? As he's shown there in that game, he can cope with Haaland. And it's not just about going shoulder to shoulder. It's about taking a step back and using that positional awareness. But let's take a look here at the performance against Benfica. Now, of course, Benfica, they knocked Ajax out of the Champions League. So I'm not saying it was the best thing in the world, but, but it was very good. And I'll be honest, it was, it was Timber actually marking uh, Nunes for the goal instead of um, the header goal instead of uh, Martinez. Just saying. But look. More examples here in terms of the positional awareness. He knows when to lunge in and when not to lunge in. Winning the ball there nicely. This is him going, well, look, that's him alongside Nunes. Who wins the header? Ah, you mean, no, he's, he's five foot nine, Sam. He can't win headers. Oh, look, that's him winning a header there against uh, Liverpool's new striker. Imagine that. Uh, again, Nunes here trying to knock the ball over Martinez's head. Positional awareness to go in at the right time and win the ball back. Over here, again, he's looking for the ball in behind. Martinez, positional awareness and timing. Both are just as important as each other. Spot on there. Next one. This is Nunes trying to turn inside Martinez. Absolutely not, my friend. Thank you very much. I'll have that ball back. Um, again, over here, Nunes, he could, there's, there's a few runs that he could have made and covered. He's covering the cross. Wins the ball. Knocks it out. We go down here. Wins the ball. That's actually a separate one here. But look, this is Nunes here. This is the same situation as uh, we showed in Haaland in the first one. Turns around. Gets into space. Not worried. Not phased at all by the press. That's something that I've re you really, really will notice about this Sandra Martinez. I've watched him quite a bit. Um, and now I'm learning more about him. It's obvious that he's press resistant. Uh, and press resistant doesn't mean that he won't lose possession. But he's far more astute and confident in his own ability when a, when a player sometimes when you know it's, it's like boxers it's all well well and good until someone punches you in the face and everything changes in football it's all well and good in training until somebody is bearing down on you and you, you're shit in your pants but he doesn't particularly do that he's got the focus and the awareness and go no, that's all right i'll just take it over there he's got a calmness about his game this one here oh look that's him winning a header <laughs> over nunez isn't that lovely uh but look I just wanted to do this video not as a not as a joke, but as a I, I, I don't think it's right that so much is said about his height. And if I can pull this one back up now, uh, as I said, you're seeing this being spread by the media and you will see it. It's it, they, they want him to all it oh, will be amazing if Martinez if Martinez was 195 centimeters, it'd be like, well, he's a big lad. Uh, but what can it? What was he like in possession? That they'd find the weakness in his game, and they'd try and exploit it and sell it as the as the main reason why he's a risk. Is Martinez a risk? Yes. Is Nunes a risk? Yes. Is every signing that every club makes a risk? Yes. It all depends on how much research you've done and whether he's the right profile player or not. But as the stats have shown, Martinez is more than capable in the air. And as I've hopefully shown in this video. Martinez hasn't been signed as a burly, Burnley type player, six foot three to win all the head. Football's changed. Football's modernized. Football's played on the ground. And Martinez is the greatest example of that. Not the greatest example of that, wrong word. Is a perfect example of that. He's somebody who's been signed for a specific, a specific profile by Eric Ten Hag. And it's got absolutely sweet FA to do with his ability in the air. But he's fine with that anyway. Don't let anybody try and tell you that Martinez is going to struggle physically. He's got the football IQ. He's got the aggressiveness, that Argentinian personality. That will probably be an asset to him for sure. But it, he's a different type of defender. When you can take a step back and you take a look at the facts and, and look at the performances and you see what he's done, you won't worry about his height whatsoever. It's just going to be a number. It wouldn't have made a difference to me, a jot of difference to me if he was 10 centimeters taller. He would still be pretty much the same, the same centre back, as far as I'm concerned. Look, no doubt this video is going to get clipped up when we can see from a corner, and this Andrew Martinez is beaten in the air by Erling Haaland, and everyone's like, "Oh, value is 20 centimetres taller." 
but we've signed him for a specific reason. Ten Hag signed him for a specific reason. I hope I've shown a bit of that in this video. So if you enjoyed it, please drop a like on the video. I'd love to do more of these research type videos. As I say, I'm really proud that the content that's doing well this preseason is stuff that's a bit more research. It does take a bit more time. So if you do enjoy it, please drop a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Let me know what else you'd like me to take a look at.